Hey everybody, I'm Robert. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Apex and of course to the Nürburgring. Well, I'm sitting here in front of the E46. This is all I'm going to show you of it for this video right here because as you know, the last five months we've been working on this car. Um, it has been a tremendous project so far. It's been awesome. We've really been enjoying it. And I'm going to kind of talk a little bit later on in the video about what that's uh, done to our mindset about what we're doing here at Apex and what we're doing with these cars because it's really been a lot of fun designing, building, and just watching the whole thing come together. Um, I was in Florida for uh, the better part of that five months. I was working on the house the entire time. I still feel like I have 15 months to go. That's a whole nother story, but great progress. Everything's going really well with that, but we are back in Germany. Uh, it was wonderful getting back and getting to see the car and the progress. Obviously, along the way, I was watching the videos that uh, Tom, George, and all, and everyone that had been coming around were making. We probably have by now, if I had to guess, about one to one and a half terabytes of footage from the entire build process, really high quality stuff. A lot of fun things, a lot of bleep outs from George, you know, the usual stuff. But um, we have, I would say, somewhere around 20 videos lined up of the footage, and we've already, or I would say 20 videos we have lined up from the entire car build, 15 of which we've already uh, actually got all the content for. It started from when uh, Tom and George came and laid out all the parts that we had and did basically an unboxing of everything from uh, drive shafts to suspensions to air intakes and things like that. A lot of you will remember Pete. Pete was our detailer. He was uh, with us at Apex for several years, very meticulous, very detail oriented. He actually came and he, uh, he went and cleaned the car, stripped everything down, and then he polished the paint before the PPF was ready to go on. And then we obviously move over to the PPF section. A lot of you guys will remember that every time a, a big influencer gets a new car, oh, it's got to go to the bling bling PPF uh, uh, paint protection job. And they just show it getting put on and it's a big promotional thing. But what we actually did was brought in one of our friends, David, who does beautiful PPF work, but we talked to him about the process. We talked to him about why do you pick different PPFs? He goes all the way down to showing us the color that when you hold a certain PPF up to a light, one might give a purple tint, one might give a clear tint, one might give a yellow uh, hue to it. And so we broke down those aspects, how to install it, what do you have to look out for, how do you prevent air bubbles. There's a lot of just more, I would say, content in terms of something that makes you or my, even myself understand what these installers go through. Uh, so that's, that's actually hopefully going to be something that is enjoyable to see. Um, then we have uh, actually a trip down to the engine shop. So Tom and George went and actually went to the engine builder. And the engine's a whole nother thing. I might even allude, uh, you know, segue into that a little bit later. But they showed all of the parts sitting out on the table, uh, measurements from parts that came out to parts that were going in, and just really gave a nice breakdown with the motor completely torn down. That, that's actually a really fun video that I'm excited for you guys to see. Um, dash work. When you look at the dash in this car, what the guys went through to put it in. Um, in terms of track cars and track builds that you see around the area, very much on the higher end of what you get. We, we see a lot of dashes, missing parts, and glove box that open up into uh, roll cages and all kinds of just, just nightmares. And they went through and cut the dash apart, section things, move, move different panels into certain places so that the dash would work. Uh, really did a clean job fitting it around the cage and different things like that. That's actually a fun one uh, to show. Uh, even working on the, on the wiring loom. So, you know, when you go to a car like this and you take out so many of the OEM uh, uh, components, you have two options. You can cable tie off your wire looms and just keep all your clips off to the side, or you can actually have somebody come in and rework the entire loom. They cut out all of the old wires, they cut everything they need, they strip it back and actually remove them, retape it all so it's nice. And of course, we went that way. So we actually have a video where we talk about what it takes to work the, the loom. Um, when everything was said and done, obviously we don't have the OEM brakes on this car. Uh, we wanted to go through and actually George did a lot of work rebending uh, new brake lines for the car from the front to the back, so we show that. Um, even down to the brake lines that we have fitted that go basically between the hard lines up to the calipers. So there's a lot of, that's, a, that's an entire series by itself. Um, then we go into the transmission, you know, uh, we've, I'm, I'm looking at it right here. We've got the, 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 the sequential gearbox that we talk about why a sequential gearbox. That was actually something Tom uh, brought up. He said, well, why a sequential gearbox? And we said, okay, well, we're actually going to do an entire video on this specific gearbox, the benefits of it. We're going to show how the cooling works. We're going to show about how the clutches work, how everything goes together to make this gearbox work. Just 
to get a better understanding of why would you even bother with a sequential gearbox versus trying to fit a DCT or just sticking with a manual transmission. So that's something we're going to do. We actually have another one that is going to be separate from the transmission just due to the length of it, and that's going to be where we talk about the diff. So obviously you have the differential, and we're going to talk about gear ratios, about the lockup, and all these different things that, um, that, that, that we take into consideration when selecting a differential for this car. Uh, we're actually going to actually, we actually have footage showing um, the differential torn apart, the assembly process and how that all goes together. So that's going to be its own uh, concept as well. It's own, its own episode, if you would. You guys might recall that we're putting an active JRZ suspension in this. It's a really cool system, but there's a few things that we had to think about from wiring, where to mount the control box, how we're installing the reservoirs and everything like that. So we actually have a full video. It might even be two videos, honestly, where we talk about this suspension. We talk about the installation process and how it works. It really is a mind boggling system and I'm excited to show you guys that too. Then it breaks down into tires and wheels. How did we, how do we come to tire and wheel sizes? What are our goals out of the tires and wheels? What tires are we running uh, and everything like that? So that's going to be its own video. Heat management, obviously heat management in a, in a track car is not just, oh, how do we keep the engine cool? We've got engine to cool. We've got a transmission to cool, a differential to cool. Uh, so we actually have coolers for everything. We've got air conditioning in the car. So we have to keep, uh, you know, every, everything separated, keep the heat managed. We have to bring cold air into the intake alongside the ducting for the brakes to keep the brakes cool. We also have heat management that uh, we actually got a, a, a nice foil that is on the firewall and in the tunnel that also helps deflect the heat, if you would, from the exhaust. It is on and on and on. The biggest, one of the biggest struggles you have on a track car is managing your heat. So we have a concept that basically runs from the front of the car through the car, using the airflow through the car all the way out the back and the coolers at the back of the car. And we're gonna break down into that and talk about that. Um, another one was just the, a, a pretty thing, if you would, and that's the, the setting up uh, of all of the Alcantara that we did in the car from the carbon fiber pole positions getting wrapped by AMX to the dash, deciding what we're gonna do. We did really neat little logos that were almost pressed into it. So yeah, I think if you know uh, my style and what I really, what I like is to be more subtle. I don't want it to really be in your face, um, you know, just big apex logos or anything like that on the, on the headrest. That's not really my, my preference. So we did a really nice pressed logo and it put a lot of consideration into that. That's going to be its own little series looking at how they fit the dash and how they get all that. Um, then we've got the, the next one is going to be from the carbon trims. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of carbon parts. You've got the, the splitter, you've got um, all of the trims around it. You've got the rear diffuser, you've got the door cards. The door cards worked out really nice, but we had to do a lot of work molding them in and heating them up and bending them just to, just to fit a little bit better than they came from the factory. So there's a lot of just trims, finish, and interior work that we're going to do an entire episode on. Um, and another one is uh, th that I alluded to previously is we used a set of Corsa actually to do a lot of the gear ratios from the differential and the transmission. Um, so that's going to be its own episode as well where we show here's how we determine what gear ratios we want because our gear ratios are very specific to this car and this track, where we want to be at specific turns. The goal is to avoid coming up to a turn wide open throttle and having to grab a gear for one second before the turn. And then right after you get that, you put it back down into the, into the previous gear. It, it gets to be tedious. So we went through and work to try and avoid that with, uh, with our gear ratio setup and we use technology. We use what a lot of people might consider a game or a video game or something like that. We actually see it as a, quite a realistic simulator that we can use to, to try and avoid these issues. Um, the next thing, we haven't got here yet, but we're going to. That's the first start. We're very close to that. We got some of the last brake lines today that we needed to connect to, to the hard lines on the rear, on the rear axle. And uh, so the first start is very close, but we are going to share that with you guys. That's going to be a first start with no intake on it. And there's also going to be no exhaust on it. So it should be pretty loud. Hopefully it sounds cool. Uh, we'll, we'll see what that is. And then it's going to be going through and installing the Hymus air intake, uh, how, what our solutions are for the cold air, uh, and what things we have to look out for in Germany based on tube regulations and the inspections. There's some things that we have to deal with such as as a car drives by, they can actually use a decibel meter and see how loud the car is. And if you have a cold air intake that comes in and comes out the front bumper with no diffusion of that, it could end up being too loud and it could fail. So we'll show what we're doing to avoid that and what Hymus has done in their system to hopefully 
or not to hopefully, but to, to avoid that issue as well. Um, then we're, so we're gonna do a video dedicated to the air intake and installing it. Then we've got a video uh, wrapping up uh, the exhaust. So we're actually working with Miltech and putting a really nice uh, wrap on the exhaust all the way through, uh, just again, part of heat management. And then we're gonna install that exhaust, obviously start the car and see what it sounds like with the exhaust on it. And then of course, we've got the first drive. Once we drive the car, once I get the car on the road, we're gonna have to do a, a small little pattern, if you would, to break in the differential. And then I've got a thousand kilometers of break in to do. So I'll drive it between uh, Apex and my house and back, and that's about 350 kilometers. And then I'm gonna take it on track once everything's been gone through and do no wide open throttle, just nice cruising pace laps, just to feel the suspension, get everything tuned in. And I'll do that for about 600 kilometers. And then at that point, we will be ready to take it to the chassis dyno, where we will put it on the chassis dyno and, uh, and show you guys what kind of performance numbers we're getting out of it. You know, the, the object of this build from the onset was never to say, I need to have 430 horsepower out of this motor. Uh, the, the object of the build or the objective of the build is to have something that sounds really good, that delivers nice torque, that delivers nice reliable power. Sure, I want it to be over 400 horsepower, but I'm not trying to set a record of, you know, this is by half a horsepower, the most powerful E36 ever built or for these mods or anything like that. It is simply about emotion, drivability, and just what, you know, a driving pleasure that you get out of being behind the wheel of this car. So we're gonna share that, uh, that dyno session with you guys so you can see what we end up with. And I think that that's you know, pretty much gonna conclude what you would consider, well, of course you're gonna have the first lap. I mean, there, there's gotta be that, right, Tom? Um, <laughs> Tom's nodding, he agrees. There's gotta be the first lap, uh, the first lap where we can give it some power and everything like that. But that will conclude the series. But you know, when it's all said and done, some of these are gonna split into one and two, uh, one or two different episodes per item. We're looking at 20, to 22 videos uh, that we have laid out. And like I said, most of them filmed already. So that's going to be a very interesting uh, little, little session. So really the car's probably gonna be on track and running before all these get put out. So I'm curious for you guys, you know, uh, do you think you know, once a week is what we're shooting for? Uh, maybe you know, to, do, to do one release a week? And uh, if you guys think that that seems like a reasonable number, should we space it out longer? Or should we throw them together a little more? So definitely give us some feedback on that. There's been a couple things that have happened during the build. And, and, and actually they were mostly positive things, a couple things that we've seen. And, and I don't think anyone would really be surprised at this, but probably uh, one of the biggest takeaways from it was how much we've enjoyed doing this project. It's been a lot of fun. I've been away for some of it. I came back in the middle and was got to be a part of it for, for a little while in the middle. Uh, like I said, then there's been a crew of guys that have been coming in and out and helping George with, you know, holding this, fitting that, uh, fabricating this, uh, installing that, and even holding the camera at different times. And we've really, really enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. And interestingly enough, like I said, this is where it probably is no surprise, we want to do more. So we're currently actually looking for an E36 M3 because that's the direction that I would like to go with the next build. Um, I was looking for an E92. I thought maybe an E92 would be the way to go, but um, there's a very specific reason why I want to go with an E36. And that's because in my opinion, the E92 is getting, it's getting newer. It's, you know, I would go with a dual clutch car. I would want, um, you know, in the E92, I would want a fully caged car because you're getting to a very capable platform. You're getting to a very fast platform. So I would want to go with a fully caged, full spec track car on the E92. But with an E36, what has been really speaking to me lately is that I want to do a very, very clean club sport, a very retro, nice interior, nice seats, half cage. But again, do just like this car where it's completely stripped down to nothing and brought back up from zero. And uh, it's something that is actually really exciting to me. It's an exciting direction to go after having worked on this E46 and done this project. So it's something that we're gonna do. And in fact, we're looking for a car now. I've got my eye on a couple. Um, I learned a few things and this is interesting, you know, possibly for you guys who are getting ready to do a build. Um, if you think you're gonna go all the way in, and this is nothing negative about this car, about the E46, but I paid, I, I paid too much for this car. Um, you know, I thought that we were getting a car that had a built motor and, and different things like that. Um, and 
it did have a built motor and everything that I was told by the seller was absolutely true. So don't get me wrong in any regard, but when it came time to tear the motor down for the limited number of kilometers that it had on it, there was, there were issues in piston sizing. There were issues in just, just random things that when you got done, you said, okay, the, the car ran well. It was, everything went well, but you know what? We're going to take all of this and we're going to throw it all away. So we ended up throwing away pistons. We ended up doing all kinds of stuff that, was thought to be in good condition. So I'm learning from that takeaway on the E36 and I'm looking for a car. If you've got one, you know one, let me know. I'm looking for an E36 M3 that will pass Tuve, that runs, it starts, it drives decent. I'm not really concerned about the interior quality because it's all gonna go in the bin. I'm not really worried about if there's scratches or swirls on the paint because it's gonna get stripped down to nothing and get redone. So I'm now looking on the next car to say, okay, since we're taking it this far, we're not worried about having the most pristine car uh, and just to redo it all. So that was definitely a takeaway, something that I learned. Hey, save a little money on the car itself. You're gonna have to do some fabrication work anyways on this. We had to fill rust holes that were on the bottom floor. We had to fill holes from where the old cage was installed and things like that. So uh, we're gonna learn from that and move forward on the 36 build. Um, you know, another thing that makes me excited about the 36 build is staying in this naturally aspirated zone. Uh, a lot of the new cars that have come out, you know, we had the G80, we had the F80. Both were really cool cars. I don't think anyone can argue about, uh, well, for example, the F80 M3 taxi that we, that we ran for years. No one can really argue about how impressive that car was and how much fun it was. But it's, it's really leading into a new era of cars where everything's turbocharged, everything's really heavy, everything's getting quite large. Um, it also goes in the category when you're looking at like the... Uh, you know, the supercars from McLaren, Ferrari, Porsche, etc. They're so powerful. They're so fast. You get them on the road and you're in a hundred kilometers uh, speed limit area and you're doing 200, 220 just to hear the engine wind up, just to see the thing actually do what it's capable of. And with these older cars, with the naturally aspirated E36, with this E46, and even with the E30, if you want to go back a little bit further, you're getting cars that you can Kind of row through the gears a little bit more. You can give it a little bit of gas. You can hear that inline six actually make some noise, wind up the RPM and not be going breakneck speeds, if you would. So that's one of the things I'm really excited about the E36 project. And I just am excited to get back to building cars that we can go out and drive and have fun with. You think of the old air-cooled Porsches and things like that. No one's ever going to tell you they were fast, but there's a serious following after those cars. There's a serious emotion that when you just, all you have to do is look at them. I mean, you don't even need to drive it just walk up and look at it. The likes of, of uh, Singer, what they're doing with them, it's absolutely amazing. And obviously I don't think that we're at Apex going to get on the level of what they're doing. That's pretty impressive with what they do with the cars. But I would like to go with that concept on this fleet of BMWs. I think a lot of you guys that have been following my Instagram or my YouTube for a long time, you know that I wanted to have an E30, an E36, 46, a 92 of track prepped cars that were built in a very beautiful way. And I've, that, 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 that goal has kind of been rekindled based on this project here. I thought that I was gonna be happy with just this and that was gonna be it. But the reality now is that I'm very excited to go and start an E36 project. I'm very excited actually to take the E30 and do the same thing. Uh, we were thinking for a while that we were gonna restore the E30 back to its re original red color and uh, return it to OEM, you know, back to factory spec. But through the whole process, we've decided, no, I want to do this whole club sport build on that as well. So that'll be after the E36. But, um, you know, this is just a little bit of insight to the thought process, a little bit of insight into what we're doing. The excitement that has generated, you know, has been generated by working on this E46. And yeah, I'm excited to take you guys along on this path. I'm excited next week we're going to start the E46 series. I don't want the E46 series to be the only content that we're putting out now that we're back in Germany we're able to actually do other things. We spoke before about possibly bringing back the three question blitz. We spoke about, you know, obviously having the normal sit downs and, and building the community and things like that. So those are all things that we're looking forward to doing. If you have any ideas, of course, don't hesitate to ask. But if you have any questions that you'd like to see in the three question blitz, we're gonna do one actually next week as well. That's going to start. So please ask away, it could be about Apex, it could be about the 46, it could be about me, it could be about where the hell's Tom Stamp. I don't care what it is. You guys are welcome to ask. We'll put it in the three question blitz 
And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. This is going to be a lot of fun. I think you guys are going to really enjoy the content that, uh, that we've put together on this build project. Um, I will, I'm no, by no means an expert in every category or media or making videos, so we've done the best that we can, but I think that you're going to find that it's going to be a lot of fun. Anyways, guys, as always, if you've made it this far, you're definitely tier one. Really appreciate everything. Appreciate all the support, and we're looking forward to it. Thank you so much. That's impressive as Hmm. You're very fast, Mr. Camera. <laughs>